All right. Sandwich day. Thank you, Earl of Sandwiches. See, you know? What is that story? He was a gambler, wasn't he? Was he was a gambler. He was too lazy to get up from the table, and he asked that he could eat something that wouldn't mess up his fingers while he was playing cards. Put my meat in between two slices of bread. Exactly. Exactly. The sandwich is born. Well, I'll what have you, what sandwiches have. Well, okay, but, but yet pizza's a sandwich. That's my favorite sandwich. Okay. Open vase sandwich, right? Yes. Sandwich defined as bread, spread, filling. Exactly. So I'm going to make some pizza. And what, right. are you, what are you going to be making I'm for us I'm going to do a, a version of a Monte Cristo sandwich. Oh, that's good. That's deep fried, right? Well, not today. Oh. Not today. I don't like, you know, deep fried. It kind of, it, 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 it's more fat than I care for. It's a pain in the tuckus. Well, there's that too. It so comes apart simple. in the fryer a lot of times, It, it right? often can, yeah. So yeah. you're going to pan fry it for us? I'm going to pan fry it, and, and that should do it. And we got some wonderful bread here. That's challah. Challah Texas toast. Challah. <laughs> exactly. So we got our bread, which and this is a good bread for it, and the bread should always match the, the product that it's going with. So if I was doing something, you know, um, you have to think of it as uh, what's going to encase your sandwich, all right? And in this case, I want a softer bread that's going to absorb some of that egg batter, okay, which I have hidden in this bowl that you can't see yet. Now, would you, would you normally use a staler bread, or it doesn't matter? Um, I would use a more stale bread, because you want the, the, the bread to absorb some of, that, uh, some of that egg batter, mm -hmm. so it penetrates in there and you get that flavor in there. But now we don't have so much of it, so, all right. So, I like my cheese. So we got our spread, and this spread can work a couple different ways. In this, in this case, it's gonna help protect, actually be a barrier from the egg from the outside. Okay. But if we had wet ingredients like tomatoes uh, or those roasted peppers that we saw earlier, that would help keep our bread from getting all soggy. That's the bread spread filling aspect. Exactly, and now comes the filling. And your filling typically is going to be anywhere between a third and a half of your sandwich. That's a nice looking uh, piece of ham there. Yeah, you know, nothing but the best for us. I'm damn straight. All right. And we do have a slicer now, so that's nice. Yeah, we that's can, it. We can slice it ourselves we can if slice, we choose we can to. Dice, we, can, we can do it all. All right. So it's all together. All right. Now it comes a little bit of the messy part. Oh, messy. So far, easy to do at home, right? Not hard at all. How many of you had a Monte Cristo out there? I, trust me, if you try one, whether it's, in this case, in a pan, which is much easier, or deep fried, I think it's yeah. going to be a go-to sandwich. And we're looking for it to get the heat up. We're looking for the, the, the oil. You know, you actually get some waves of, you can see some waves on the, on the you know, surf's up, dude. Mm -hmm. Oil's ready. <laughs> All right, we're not quite there. We want, we want it to heat up and get to uh, not quite the smoking point. All right, because after the smoking point is the flash point, and then there's fire yes. on top of the pan instead of under the pan. Not a good scene. Not at all. Get that little. All right. Wheel. So if you look now, we're starting oh. to just about reach that smoking point. Smoky. Yes, indeed. No bandit. So, anytime you, I, I try and work with anything that has that's batter dipped, whether it's uh, standard breading, I always try and keep one hand dry. All right. It's a good tip. Now this See? is a, this is fresh bread, so I don't want to leave it in there too long, or it's going to get so soggy I can't even handle it. Oh yeah. I don't want people saying I can't handle my sandwich. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. All right, while you're right. keeping an eye on that, I, I guess I can start my sandwich, the open face sandwich. So we got here some uh, marinara sauce that we made in oh, yeah. one of our classes. And, you know, that's got some roasted tomatoes in there. It's fantastic. And, and the best thing about pizza, in my opinion, is you, know, you can put as much sauce or as little sauce. We always uh, ask students, you know, hey, have you had a bad pizza? You know, and obviously the answer is yes. Oh, of course. So you could have a bad pizza. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this decent amount of sauce because I'm actually using a pre-made flatbread. So you want to talk about time savings at home? There you go. Buy, uh, you know, what, whatever, any type of pre-made flatbread or pita, right? I got to flip it over here. Oh, Ooh, oh that's a beautiful go. color. See that? This is real cooking over here, you know? Uh, I'm going to add, this is some really nice cheese that we have. Ooh. This is fresh mozzarella with some, uh, fancy. it is prosciutto and fresh basil oh. in it. So I'm just going to do, let's see, just enough to cover the outside. Mm -hmm. Make this one nice and simple, but if you had some mushrooms or uh, roasted red peppers or some uh, oh. more prosciutto if you want. All those are good thing. Yeah, whatever, we, whatever you're yeah. into. And, and we do a lot. We'll put out, um, you know, if we do a, a pizza night, uh, we'll just put, the, we'll buy the crust pre-made or we'll, we'll, we'll make some crust and just throw all the toppings out and it's like, you know, sort of an ice cream sundae bar. It's a pizza bar. Oh, that sounds Put whatever like toppings you want on it, throw it in the oven. Ten minutes later, everybody gets their custom pizza. 
Uh, like Chef, can I trouble you for that, that pan? Where'd that oh, that's pan right. go? That pan, I put that pan down here. Never mind, I'll trouble myself. Okay. Oh, I'm over here now. I couldn't resist. Some things to... never get old, and then some things... Yeah. Some things <laughs> started off old. Yeah. All right, fun. so that's how easy and quick that was. I'm going to put this in the oven. I'm going to do this at 500 degrees, get that cheese nice and melted. All right. Crisp this up a little bit, and uh, we'll take it from there. So Cool. I'm going to start a fire over here while you're doing that. So real quickly, I have here, I already put uh, some pastrami nice. and some corned beef in there. If you want to put some Swiss cheese and some sauerkraut and go Reuben style. That would be the way this, I'd go. This is the lazy man version of grilled cheese. Instead of spreading the cheese on there first, I'm sorry, instead of spreading the butter on there first, I just put the butter in the pan. There you go. This is one of those new age... Uh, non-stick pans. Fancy. So I'll take my sandwich, press it right into that butter. Because again, one of the reasons we like sandwiches is because it's something that everyone can make and they mm -hmm. can make them really quickly and it's a beautiful thing. So just get that kind of pressed in there. So I'm just going to press that press down a little bit. I had some carrot. cheese. Oh yeah. So that got the color Ooh. I want. You do nice work. Yeah, I try. Get that pressed down. I'm going to turn my heat off. I have enough heat there. That's why I like pressing this. So that's good enough for me. Obviously, if I wanted to, I could finish this in the oven if I had some cheese on there. But, but this is for you, so no cheese. No cheese for me. No yeah. cheese for you. You know what I do, though? I'm going to garnish it uh, in a little bit with some pickles. Okay. But i got to get the pizza before All I do right. that. All right. As soon as that pizza comes out, we can start eating. Absolutely. Let me go get that my pickles and my, my accoutrements. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Time to plate this up. My favorite part. All right. Besides eating. So I'm just going to do a little, little bias. Oh. My sandwich is biased. Oh, look at that. Being biased is, is permitted here. Beautiful. Oh, nice. So That's gonna, a beautiful I'm thing. Just going to plate that up like, like so. Right. Ooh, isn't that pretty? And I got, I got my Beautiful pickles there, and okay. a little, little tomato for color. Put two pickles on there because, well, I got two pieces of sandwich. Okay. And I do love pickles. Very nice. Nice, simple. Oh, we got a nice. We got that melty cheese. I know that does nothing for you, but I, well, I'm, it does. I'm it's digging pretty. It. It's pretty. Or mozzarella, maybe. Yeah. Put a little green here. Okay. Make my plate prettier. All right. Now, a lot of times with Monte Cristo, this is the point where they dump all kinds of powdered sugar over it. I'm not a fan of that. Because one of the things I like. With the Monte Cristo, it's almost like a French toast, right? So I got some nice maple syrup, nice warm maple syrup Beautiful. to dip it into. So you can keep your French dip. I'm taking this. Some people do strawberry jam too, right? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. classic powdered sugar. Yeah. Syrup. That looks very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, you know, there's something missing though. Oh, my other sandwich, my open face one. Let exactly. Me get, let me get that out of the oven. It should be just done now. You want to have some I'll nice put pretty rainbow in. microgreens. I used a little on the sides there to All set right. off my, my plate. Uh, let me get my pizza out. I, I do have a uh, pizza cutter, too. Oh, okay. So. Someone planned ahead. All right. That looks pretty darn tasty to me. Well, that's kind of the point, right? Oh, that is nice. Oh, well, my pizza plate. Wow. And then with this, oh. I think... Uh, the fancy can, plate. Well, it's the one that we had. Here so we, can we have lots see. of fancy plates here, don't we? Yeah, we do. We have a plethora of plates. A plethora. All right, so plethora of pizza plates, even. Oh, you hear that crispness too. All right. So my, my cheese. Um. Um. So I think that's. I think I have to go smaller. Go bigger, yeah. go home. Yeah, I'd go a little smaller. Mm -hmm. All right. For me, I would do that. So let me do this. So we got the fresh basil. We do. So what I'm what I'm going to finish this off with is. Uh, These nice pieces with the with this cheese with the prosciutto. Just put a couple Ooh. nice slices right there. Oh, nice. thank you. I'm gonna do yep, nice whole leaf. Thank you, chef. All right, and then if you want, we have some chiffonade, right? Of I, our fresh basil. I, I am. I'm gonna put a little bit on for flavor. Yum. And color. And then um, if I can trouble you for that that extra virgin olive oil. Ah, yes you can. 
And you just did. Thank you. So this is a really good quality extra virgin. We like to use this you know, more for finishing when you're going to actually eat mm -hmm. and enjoy the yes. oil. So just going to put just a couple drops on. Nice. Just to finish that off, give it a little flavor. And then, um, you know, I would take my side towel and do that. Oh, you get a little Parmesan? Yes. Yeah, why not? For just in case. Nice. Okay. All right. Don't nice and simple. Here. And then, um, you know, I would take my side towel and just clean that wipe, up. Yeah, you know, clean up that plate. Yeah. But, you clean uh, up pretty good usually. I try. But, I mean, nice, easy, open face sandwich, pre done, either pita or flatbread in this case, some sauce some nice uh, fresh mozzarella, or any cheese or any toppings you want. You want to do three cheese, four cheese, 17 cheese, whatever you're into, you're only limited to your creativity and of course your wallet. Exactly. So, Good stuff, sandwiches, bread, spread, filling, open face, closed, all good. Thank you, Earl. We love you, Earl. I guess he's dead by now. Yeah. Sorry, Earl. Goodbye, Earl. Your legacy lives on. Welcome to Retro Kitchen. Today's segment is, what the hell is that? We've got some things here that you may not be familiar with or have seen before, kind of unique. First one here, this is actually for, uh, for pasta or for dough, and what it does, it will crimp and cut it at the same time. So using pierogies or, or pies or tarts, something like that. Um, this is made out of tin, so not very user friendly anymore. This one's kind of different. Basically, this was used for uh, baked potatoes. Put them all on a spike and put them in your oven. This one here I just thought was very unique. You pick up meats or something that's, that's layered out and press the button and it pushes them off onto your plate. This is a Limburger cheese slicer. Limburger cheese, it stinks, yes, but the aftertaste is even worse than the smell. And the way this worked is you would actually put the Limburger cheese in there, which is a soft cheese, and you crank this plate and it would push the cheese forward. When you got to the right, when it was sticking out the amount you wanted, you run the wire down it and the Limburger cheese would be sliced and fall off onto your bread. All right, then it would be served with red onion and another slice of bread, and there you have a Limburger cheese sandwich. Now you know what the hell those things are. Hey, Chef. Welcome, Chef. How you Chef, doing? Chef Christian Tudner is here with us today, and uh, from the Nassau Inn, right in downtown Princeton. Yes, Chef. And uh, so, thanks for coming in. First of all, we're excited that you're here. Thanks for having me. And uh, pleasure. Now, for you. Now you started cooking naturally as a as a youngster, right? I was raised on a small organic farm in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So you like how I did that naturally thing? <laughs> pretty, it was pretty it was clever, I thought. Nice, nice and dry. I like it. So, now, so now that's that's part of your your core, right? So you still carry through on that as much as you can. Absolutely, I uh, try to stick close to um, to childhood with that the the core belief that the ingredient is really what. Uh, it, really transcends. Right, right. Once you have the fresh, you're not, you know, what else do you need, right? That's it. Now, you've, you've been one who's always been drawn to follow your passion, right? So that took you from Boston to San Diego, right? Just went to school in San California. Diego. Yeah, okay. San Diego cool. Culinary Institute. Uh, Culinary School, good stuff. Yeah. So, so from there, now, it wasn't real, your dad wasn't real keen on it, but I hear you went to Vegas. So, so did, did everything you did in Vegas stay in Vegas? <laughs> No, it went on the internet. Okay, okay. You brought it with you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you're you're very quiet and modest, which you know most of us chefs aren't. However, you know you've worked with some pretty heavy hitters over the years, right? Yeah, I've worked with uh, three James Beard Award-winning chefs. Whoa! Now, now, if my aunt Betty's watching, she's not gonna. Well, who's this James Beard character? Could you put it so that aunt, aunt Betty would understand the significance of, of James Beard? It's one of the accolades that uh, chefs receive, um, given out by other people in the industry that recognize um, greatness within uh, kitchens and restaurants around the country. Right, so it's a jury of your peers. Yeah. A very yeah, tough exactly. crowd too, yeah, right? Absolutely. So when you got to work with some of the chefs, now who, who are some of the folks you worked with? Uh, Chef Jean Joho, who, um, whose restaurants in Chicago, Everest. Um, Chef Gordon Ramsay, who uh, opened up a restaurant in Las Vegas in the, uh, Gordon Ramsay Pub and Grill, mm -hmm. as well as Chef Michelle Richard, who uh, has a 
a restaurant in uh, DC called Central. Yes. Now with now working with, with such such talented folks, what did you draw from their creative process and how they they created things and and, and made things that, that people just wanted? And I really uh, I loved how they felt about the ingredients. They I, you could feel their passion daily. Was it, it was just it transcended just the food and became personable. It was, it was people and food. Right. And, and it really was structured around your team and, sure. and how important your team is. You, you, you can only gain success through the people that you work with day in and day out. Yeah. We have, you know, and and it's, you're very fortunate to have a, a good team where you are. And so what, what, what motivates you each day? I mean, this is a tough business. It's a lot of work, a lot of long hours, but, but what gets you going? What gets you out of bed when I can't wait to do this? Uh, it's, it's hearing compliments, seeing the look on people's face when you create a special that they didn't think about or have never tasted before, and greeting them at the table. And uh, even if it's a negative thing, going out and speaking, because uh, that's how you improve. You, you just talk about the ingredients and, and what they liked and didn't like, and then sure. you can uh, adjust accordingly. It's funny that you say that because we have a lot of students that one of the things that they're afraid of is, is not getting it right. They're afraid to fail and, and, and so they don't try things. So, it, so you're saying it's okay to screw up now it, then, right? I think success is only based on the failures that you've come back from. Right, right. From how many times you fall down, how many times you get up. That's it, yeah. That's okay. So now what are, what are you going to prepare for us today? I'm doing a um, potato gnocchi from scratch. Nice. Uh, Chef Frank said big fan of so I'm sure we can't wait. So you ready to go to work? Yeah. Awesome. Let's, let's go. Follow me, Chef. Chef Frank, we have company. Hey. Hey, Chef. I'm Christian. How are you? What's I'm going excellent. On? How are you doing? Good to see you. Nice to be seen. I guess that's why your knives are here. I figured mm. we were expecting you. I'm, I'm ready. Excellent. You came to work. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, well, that work, that scares me, so. <laughs> I'll check in well, later. We'll, we'll tell you when it's time <laughs> that, to eat. That's it. That's it. I'm here for the important stuff. That's usually my role, though. Well, you know. Well, we'll all get to eat today, right? Yeah, good. good stuff. All right. Well, we'll see you in a little bit, Chef. Very Fancy. good, Chef. All right, Chef. Well, you got your utensils here, beautiful knives, ready to go, and I see you have some potatoes. So what will you be preparing for us today? Chef, I'm making a um, homemade potato gnocchi from scratch. Uh, started off just by wrapping up a um, potato in foil, heating, mm -hmm. preheating the oven to 350. It'll be in the oven for about an hour. Uh, you take it out, and this is what the potatoes generally look like when they're fully cooked, nice and soft. It's a baked potato. So why, so why are you baking the potato? Some people uh, boil the potato. I, I was always taught when making gnocchi to bake the potato. Mm. Uh, and that's for the moisture content, right? Absolutely, you, yeah. You want it to be nice and light, not a heavy, dense, you know, sink to the bottom of your stomach gnocchi, right? The wetter the potato, the more flour you adapt to add to it, the more you have to potentially work it, which will uh, lengthen the gluten strands. So, so it'll make it a tougher potato. Work gnocchi. smarter, not harder. Exactly. In this yeah. case, create a lighter gnocchi as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want it to be like a, a pillow. A pillow. Oh, can it's you make me one about <laughs> yay big buttons? <laughs> You can, cutting can make the dumplings as, as large or small as you wish. Well, let's start making some of them. I love <laughs> gnocchi, so I can't wait. That's so. one of my favorite things to so make. Let me, let me well. switch spots with you because uh, you have all your tools over here. I think it right. makes sense. All right, let me get in. So well, I'm, just gonna, I'm, patient too. I'm just going to cut the potato in half, make it easy to uh, take the insides out. Okay, so you said this potato baked for about an hour, and, and you do this ahead of time? Do this day ahead of time? or You can. Just, yeah, you want it to be at least room temperature. You can. It's fine. easier to scoop the potato when it's uh, a little bit warmer. Okay, so you like to bake them, let them sit and rest so they're not burning your hands. Exactly, and... yeah. So I'm just taking the uh, insides out. And then do you save those skins for an appetizer later? You can make potato skin. Absolutely. There you go, chef. You're thinking ahead. Uh, so you make uh, you can make multiple dishes with this. Uh, save, reserve the skins. Um, you can put aside some of the the insides. Mm -hmm. Make your gnocchi and make some of the stuffing for for uh, potato skins. Or a twice baked potato. Or a twice baked potato. I'm however. just thinking of uh, like frying them now. You know, keeping something in the metal to hold its shape while you're frying it. 
and then serve the gnocchi inside the fried potato skin. That's that I'm sounds. Not, I'm just, I'm just that sounds. It's not rocket science. Sounds incredible. And, you do whatever and you want with it. Right? That's what I love so much about food is uh, the chance to be creative and think outside the box sure. or outside the potato. <laughs> That's, that's dry humor like mine. That's right? <laughs> I hope everyone out there gets it. You know, they don't let me say smell of vision anymore. So, you know, I guess they It's past. Well, it's, it's, it's just dated. It's caused the craze. People are looking for the smell of vision. I heard them mention on TV this smell of vision. Where might I purchase this? So, but you don't need to because uh, you're over now at the wonderful Yankee Doodle Tap Room, Nassau Inn in yeah, Princeton. Chef. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to and, be there. And is gnocchi something that you would serve on the menu there? It is actually on the menu. Oh, excellent. Yes. Is this uh, like a staple now? It is. Or, yeah. or sometimes it's there, sometimes it's It's something not. it's been on the menu uh, since before I got there. Excellent. So I'm uh, just carrying on the tradition. Oh, so I'm right. ricing the potatoes currently. And, and what's that doing? We have, uh, this is our ricer, but we also have a food mill. You know, ricing uh, is obviously the, the preferred method for this. And what's that going to do for us? It's going to break the potatoes down into a consistent uh, product. Okay, so that it's it kind of smooth and creamy. becomes easier to work. Um, if you don't have a ricer, I've used a fork and just mashed it down, okay. try to get all the little pieces down to the same size. And that gets back to having to use less flour and have a nice lighter, consistent product, right? Exactly, yeah, you're adding some air to it. So by ricing the potato, you're adding some air, mm -hmm. uh, the, the exact quality that you want in your uh, finished product. The, the gnocchi is supposed to be fluffy and airy, really light. Absolutely. Uh, even though it's made out of a, a de more of a dense product, you're adding um, by consistency you're adding air to it and and mm -hmm. and making it nice and fluffy well mm -hmm. essentially you're going to make a dough out of it right because it's going to be it. it's going to be a pasta yep so so if we're if we have a nice light product like you said less flour we're going to have a nice light pillow for me to lay my head on that's it so from here as i eat it <laughs> edible so, pillow that's another thing that's it Instead of my pillow, you got the edible pillow. Why not? Maybe you could talk the hotel in, into when in Rome. Yankee, Yankee Doodle Tavern providing edible pillows. For <laughs> I think we're a little bit away from That's that. That's beyond my pay rate. I'll leave <laughs> that to somebody else to think. Um, so I'm I'm uh, creating a little bit of a bed for the the potato and for if you ch so choose to add a little egg to it, it mm -hmm. acts as a binder. Sure. Uh, so the flour and the potato uh, stick a little bit better. Um, you can do it without. It's more mm -hmm. of uh, an expert, um, uh, more of a uh, true Italiano. Yeah, it's that's that's what we worked. Uh, I worked with uh, Chef uh, Fabio Vivani, and do you know Chef Fabio? No, I don't. Oh, uh, he doesn't use any. Right. So we ha so we used his recipe in one of our classes, and it was basically just potato, mm -hmm. Parmesan cheese. Nutmeg, salt, and pepper. Very simple. So, but Chef Fee, um, not a big fan of nutmeg, so we took out the nutmeg because we can do whatever we want with a recipe, right? That's, yeah, you, you change it however your taste, uh, well, however you prefer. Um, so the, uh, then you can uh, start to add your flour, incorporate the, uh, excuse me. So I've created a little bit of a well well isn't that swell so, um, and, and now by putting this flour in here and creating this dough obviously some factors are going to uh to change making it in the winter versus the summer the humidity in the air things like that how much you cook the potato the moisture level that was in there yeah so all that very much like rice yeah uh, uh plays into uh, the consistency yeah exactly um so we're uh, working very gently the flour into the potato. Mama me. We call it kneading. I need some of that gnocchi <laughs> in, in the belly. <laughs> and you generally want the consistency to be, as you said, like a dough. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're basically adding flour until uh, you get that desired texture. Uh, and once you've made it a few times, it'll be easier to know when to stop. Basically, I, I, I stop once the moisture has, uh, or the potato has absorbed the flour entirely, uh, and it's not real sticky. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you don't want to continue to knead it too much 
for the, the gluten strands will become tough. And, and you don't want to be addicted to gnocchi. That's needing it too much. It is. I it you is. appreciate that. I, it's anymore. nice. It's <laughs> as dry as me. As dry as the flowers. <laughs> as the flour that I'm needing. Yeah, that's it. But that's, that's going to be, and you can see how nice that soft texture is. And I think you're going to be rewarded from your, your giving that little bit of love to that, to that dough, right? Exactly. So it, I think making any type of pasta is very much a, a labor of love. I, I think you have to give it some attention. Agreed. Some kneading, as you say. I have a dough song that I do. I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from using it. Uh, that I do for the kids in the summer for camp. And so I've uh, I pretty much come to the, the, the point at which the consistency is dry enough. Okay. And, um, we, and we have some that you already did ahead of time, but you showed the process throughout. Would you like me to grab the one for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. All right. That would be great. All right. This is, this is your, you know, in, in uh, the interest of television. So this is basically the same thing that you've done before. And should we, should we grab the other one that you have yeah. too? The other stage? Please. This way you can show it in your stages. Right. I think that's, that's helpful for everyone out there, especially if they've never made gnocchi before. So you showed how to make it to this stage and you can see that's nice and still light and pillowy. I'm not gonna lay my head on it because of the flour, but. But I could. You could. Uh, and so you, the, the, the texture is still really light, but it doesn't have a lot of uh, moisture in it. You can mm -hmm. tell the flour, it's not sticking to your hands. Uh, and you want to keep a little bit of flour on your board in order to prevent it from sticking to your cutting board or whatever surface. I like to use, uh, if you have a stainless steel table or another table that is easy to wipe down, um, just so the uh, flour and the dough doesn't get stuck in there and then it's mm -hmm. harder to clean. Sure. In uh, fact, you know what I should have brought out for you, and I apologize, I didn't. We have uh, the, the big marble tables we use for our chocolate class. That, <laughs> that would have worked quite nice, too. Nice. Oh, well, we'll make two. We got uh, everything we need here. Um, so I've flattened out this dough. Okay. Um, and so it's easier to uh, cut. Now, now, do you use a rolling pin for that normally? I don't, no, no because... just press that with your hands too. Yeah. Even, okay. Again, uh, um, the most important thing, uh, I think, is to keep it from overworking the gluten sure. strands because you really want the lightness, the fluffiness. And if you overwork the gluten, it becomes tough, more like a store-bought meal. Gluten. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so I've cut some sections out here. Yes, yeah, I see you have some right here that you cut too, but... Yeah. Might as well use those, right? All right. And so I will take a little bit of flour again, because once you cut it, the moisture is going to be exposed. Yeah, you can see that right there on the yeah. sides. Uh, and you'll roll it real easy, real light, almost like Play-Doh. So again, that love, right? Be gentle. Real, real, real light, real easy. It's like Fight Club except with gnocchi. <laughs> Rule number one with gnocchi. Be gentle with your gnocchi. That's it. <laughs> Rule number two with gnocchi. Be gentle with your gnocchi. All right, so I've rolled this out. Uh, and depending on how big your dumpling you'd like to, mm -hmm. to make, cut them about quarter inch to half inch, sometimes a little bit bigger, depending on what you'd like. Yeah. Now, uh, would you do this ahead of time and, and have this ready for service, or do you like to do that a la menu and just yeah. go right through it? I actually like to... Uh, keep a tray mm -hmm. of these pre-cut and rolled, like the, the finished product. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I'll put them in the freezer just to tighten them up a little bit. Okay. And then you can save them for the next dinner party that you do. Nice. You can have a, a we can make a bunch of them and freeze them in batches and, it is, and pull them out. It doesn't take a ton of time to do this, but it mm -hmm. is time consuming. And to do it multiple times for each party sure. can, can add up. So yeah. I like to get ahead. Put it in the freezer, keep it for next next time. That makes sense. All right. So we got some potato gnocchi, looks beautiful. And I guess now we have to cook it, right? Yeah. You ready to do that? All right. Let's clear this out and we'll get you your stuff. Uh, one last step before you put the gnocchi in the water. And you take the squared off uh, bits and you push it down lightly off the fork. And what's that doing? It's just adding some a uh, little bit of a uh, indentation, some texture to it. It's almost like um, 
you know, a little the Thorcate. Okay. It's like uh, an elephant ear or something. I don't, like that. I don't another, think I've seen that pasta. before. So. Uh, so some people use the wooden boards. Mm -hmm. You just roll it down. I like the fork. It's okay. easy. Is that, is, that a help. is that a Boston thing or is Maybe. that a San Diego Maybe. thing? Maybe. I just, uh, it's a preference thing. It's, uh, I've seen whole tables that are just gnocchi boards mm -hmm. and the whole, the family will get around and just roll yeah. gnocchi for hours. Yeah. Uh, so this pasta is ready to go in. I was going to say, I was hoping there was more than that little tiny handful. Mm-hmm. It's two handfuls. <laughs> All right, so you just have that water boil, and you said you put a little salt in there? Yep. Okay. And then how long are you going to cook those for? Just, just until they start to come to the surface. Okay, so that's usually how that lightness, they rise to the top, and, and they're, they're essentially done. Now, for your gnocchi, I know classic, uh, basically just boiled and done. But I know a lot of times we would like to saute them in some butter and get some crispness to them. You can. So it, it's just a preference. Uh, it, it is again, a preference, like you said. It is a preference, um, but also you're going to have a harder time if it is an eggless gnocchi with the sautéing. Sure, they're going to uh, start the, to fall apart, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. The, you'd have to probably pull them a little earlier, make sure the pan is really hot with some oil, mm -hmm. and, uh, and do it really quickly because, it, again, it's going to break down. Sure. Uh, so... These are just about done. I have a little garlic cream sauce. I just added a little, little touch of uh, oil into the pan, uh, chopped up some, some garlic. Once it starts to brown just a little bit, add the cream and then reduce it down. Okay, um, so that's just garlic, oil, and then just some cream reduction? And salt. Oh, nice and easy. My favorite ingredient. These are coming to the surface, so I'm going to pull them out and just throw them right in my... Oh, I, I see that little bit of parsley. Right in my too. sauce. Yeah, that's, it really comes out once it's cooked. Oh, nice. That's it. You just You're, toss in that sauce. Do you, do you want this right length of time, or basically it's done? So I'm just... It's, it's done. The uh, gnocchi's flavored. The sauce is already salted. You're just tossing and plating, really, yes. Well, let, let's get that together then. All right, sounds good. This, this is one of my favorite times, Chef. We are, we are at the point where I'm about to eat. <laughs> well, I guess we have to invite Chef feedback too, but I'm sure he's gonna come quick when he smells and sees this gnocchi. So this is our one that had the garlic with the cream reduction, correct? Yes, yeah, Chef. And just cream, garlic, and salt. That's it, very Beautiful. basic, very simple, and uh, uh, so we're going to go in the larger plate because there's going to be a little bit of uh, the lamb in with it. Oh, this one with the lamb? Yep. Oh. That's my timing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, think, I think you're a little early, but, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm also seeing there's only two forks here. <laughs> well, he doesn't have to do <laughs> I know what it tastes like. It's a working shot. Yeah, yeah. He just sends it out to us in the dining room. All right. So I've spooned all the uh, gnocchi out. Very, very Hello. I know I get like that too. I get very excited when the um, it's, when the it's food's coming out. It's almost that time. <laughs> and this this lamb you said you braised some lamb shank ahead of time. How long? About two three hours or more? Four hours actually. Four um, hours. I like to go low and slow for braises. I go about two seventy five. Beautiful. Looks fantastic. Oh, can Thank you. Give it a little tilt on there and let them see that bad boy. Oh, that's love, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right Homemade so. gnocchi. Oof. This garlic doesn't, cream sauce. Doesn't get much better than some that. Lamb. Oh, that's 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 looking good. Yeah, I don't I don't think two forks were needed. I think one may be enough. <laughs> there we go. A little <laughs> garnish. Uh, and so I like I've, your style, Chef. Hey. I've uh, tossed the the rest of the gnocchi in with a uh, marinara. So much more traditional marinara. Now, is this something that you you make at the restaurant as well? Yes, Chef. Beautiful. So many uses for marinara too, right? And we got some. You said you said your one of your favorites, your staples. I gotta have cheese. <laughs> there's there's nothing that replaces cheese. Well, it's, they, it's you can try, but there's just nothing. Very Italian influenced. Wonderful, Chef Christian over at the Yankee Doodle Tap Room, Nassau Inn in Princeton, New Jersey.
Thank you so much, Chef, for, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. And, and Chef, thank you for having it. Absolutely. Lots of fun. Thank you. One little, two little, three <laughs> little sweet potatoes. <laughs> They look delicious. They are, they're local, they're from the ground. The purple actually has the highest beta carotene, but all of these sweet potatoes are good for controlling the blood pressure, mm -hmm. for the anti-inflammatory. Basically a lot of things we've been talking about about these non-processed whole foods. And then what goes great with all these foods as far as seasoning, instead of using salt and high sodium, mm -hmm. what do we have? We can use some turmeric as well as cinnamon. And both of those, again, have the anti-inflammatory, antifungal, uh, cinnamon has the antiviral properties, good for many diseases that people may have, cancer, cholesterol, high blood pressure, all of that, diabetes. So these are spices that should definitely be in everybody's cupboard in their cabinets. We did, uh, this is yeah. Arctic char here, which using some of your spices there, uh, I made a puree here. That puree is made with sweet potatoes. So I did it as a soup, and I served it as a soup, and then I took the leftover, cooked it down, reduced it, and made a puree, a sauce here, for my Arctic char. And I have a little bit of the turmeric and the cinnamon in the fish seasoning, as well as in the soup, and now the reduction, the puree. <laughs> and it looks beautiful, so I can't So, wait. oh, you want to try it? I actually, underneath here, I found, you found two forks. Oh, well, at least but you have one for me. You can talk about the, the healing properties. Statin drugs, instead of using those, try food first. Food for your health. Food heals. She said it right.